Right, thank you for joining us today. Today we are going to be talking about setting up security. Uh, my name is John Jones. I'll be presenting today. Uh, Fred Barron is a technical architect that generally helps me out. He's not available today, so I'll, I'll be handling this one on my own. This is meant to be an interactive uh, webinar. We will be doing some polls, uh, like the one you see on the screen there, and I'm going to put one up. And that'll be popping up on your screen now. Go ahead and respond to that poll real quick. We'll be doing polls throughout the webinar, as well as if you have any questions, please ask using the question section of your little sidebar there, and we'll answer those as we go. <clears throat> hey, thank you very much for getting a number of responses there. It is a uh, black and blue butterfly is the, is the logo. Okay, today we are going to be discussing um, a few different things. Like I mentioned, this is meant to be an interactive webinar. Feel free to ask questions uh, as we go. Um, the topic is uh, set for security and setting up security in Salesforce. Uh, however, any question is welcome. Uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions that you want to send over to us. We started last week talking about getting started with Salesforce, and as we go, we will be building each week upon the topic from the previous week. So it, we've got a new org that we started last week, and we'll be building that up as we go. Um, we do recommend following along. Our videos will be posted on the Ed Bailey YouTube channel, and you can go back and watch any of the previous sessions uh, to see what you may have missed or what we may be working on. And again, please bring your questions. Um, this is meant to be uh, kind of an open forum. Ask your questions. We're here to help you out. To build on this, we're using a big company that we're building up called Universal Boxes, uh, it's a subsidiary of Universal Containers. If anybody's done the Salesforce certification exam, you'll recognize that name. All right. To get started, we're going to jump right in here and talk about what are the security options that are available. I'm going to throw another poll up here real quick. Um, go ahead and respond to that. You can select as many of those as you would like. And let's see uh, how many of those options are security options within Salesforce. I'll give you a hint as we go. There are a number of options available. And understanding each of these options is critical to setting up your system. All right. Got some good responses coming in here. So, um, As we go through this, you'll see the security options are profiles, roles, password policies, and permission sets. Those are the security options within Salesforce. There are some others as you get deeper into the system, but at a high level to get your org started, those are the security options. Administrator is a type of profile, so it's technically not a security option within the system. It, it falls under profile. Okay, so let's go in and kind of talk about each of these settings. Profiles, there's a lot, often a lot of confusion around profiles, roles, what does what, and how do they work. So let's see if we can help clear that up just a little bit here. Profiles are basically your entry level security. Profiles control what access you have to what objects, um, what's known as credit credentials, create, read, edit, delete. 
view all, modify all type of permissions per object within the system. So uh, you may have multiple objects in the system, and your profile may only allow you access to a couple of those objects or some of those objects. as well as profiles have a lot of other permissions inside of them as well, allowing you to do certain things or to use certain tools. That's all handled within the profile. So profile is your entry-level access to the object itself. Next, you have roles. Roles in org-wide defaults control your record access. So your profile lets you into an account. Your role gives you access to or determines what records inside the account you get to view. So for instance, if you have an org-wide default set to private, then the only accounts you will see are your own or any that have been shared with you through sharing rules. So that's the big difference between the two is profiles gives you access to the object and roles give you access to the records inside the object. Along with that, there are permission sets. Permission sets are an extension of a profile. They add to the profile and may give you access to an additional object or additional privileges within the system that your profile does not give you. So something like it may open up access to opportunities through a permission set that your profile doesn't generally give you. There's also sharing rules that do the same thing for roles. They extend the access of your role. So you can have a sharing rule that gives you access to a record that you don't own by default. Or you can have manual sharing, which means that you can share a record with somebody else. And then there's also password policies, which is kind of your entry level into the whole system. Uh, controlling how your password has to be set and things that way. That's always a big one that people ask about. Okay, so now that we kind of have a base understanding of what our security profiles and security options are, we're going to talk a little bit about universal boxes and how they want their company structured. We're going to kind of talk, and we talked through this, uh, if we're working with an, a company trying to set up their security model, this is kind of the method that we'll go through. We'll talk to them about their different departments. We'll talk about sales and what do they need to access? How do they want access? How do they want their records shared across the sales team? A lot of companies do not want their sales reps viewing each other's individual deals. So they put that to private and allow them to share that if they want. And then of course, the sales managers will be able to gain access or will have access to the whole team based on the role hierarchy. Uh, something I did not mention about for the roles, um, if you lock down your roles to private or read only or something like that, your company hierarchy within your role structure will open up permission as you go up the hierarchy. And we'll look at that in just a minute as we can look at this company's hierarchy. We're gonna talk about a support team, a fulfillment team, marketing and executives. So let's jump over here. And we're going to look at uh, the security requirements of universal boxes. As we go through here, remember, please ask any questions that you have, any comments you have in that question box, and we'll be happy to answer those for you.
Okay, so here we have some documentation information on Universal Box. And you'll see here we have some security settings that are set up. Sales, they want their sales team. Sales cannot see or edit anything that they do not own. So we'll want to make sure we set up or avoid defaults to private to accomplish that. But allow the sales reps to share with others. So we'll make sure that the sharing is turned on. Uh, support can see and edit all accounts, contacts, leads, and they can only read opportunities and projects. Fulfillment can see accounts, contacts, and cases, but they can't edit anything. Notice they also do not have access to opportunities here, but they have full control of a project subject. And so on down the line. So these are some settings that we'll need to set. So we'll come back to this in a minute and we will set these up inside the org itself. Okay, so here we have our company hierarchy. So we've got our CEO at the top, and we've got sales, support, fulfillment managers, department managers across, and then break down into the teams below that. So this will be important. We'll use this to set up the actual roles in Salesforce. And as I was mentioning, if you have your uh, worldwide default set to private and you want to open up access uh, to management, it'll happen through the role hierarchy. So your sales reps will only be able to see their own records. These two, Michael and Carl, Tracy will be able to see all of Carl and Michael's records being their mat manager in the role hierarchy. And then George, up here, the sales general manager, will actually be able to see all of the sales records just because he's above them in the role hierarchy. Uh, I want to point out also, as a manager in the role hierarchy, the permissions that are inherited through the role hierarchy are the owner permissions. So Tracy will have full access to Carl and Michael's records, not just read access. Tracy will actually have full access to edit their opportunities if need be. So that's just the inherited profiles as you go up the role hierarchy, okay? All right, do we have any questions so far? Let's jump into Salesforce here, and we'll kind of look at some of these options and where they sit. We're going to go into setup. And to start with, you want to go under manage users, and here you'll have your options for your roles, the permission sets, your profiles. Down here under The org by default and sharing rules are in a different section, and I often have to use the quick find to pull those up there under security controls and sharing settings. So let's start by setting up some basic profiles. So we're going to go to our profile, and you'll see uh, the list that you see by default may vary depending on your org you will see some default profiles in the system that are there. It is highly recommended do not use these standard profiles in your normal work within Salesforce. Always create a custom profile. The reason is there are some settings within these default profiles that you cannot edit. By creating a custom profile, you now have access to all options under the profile to set those up. Okay? So what we're going to do is we are going to set up profiles based on our department. So we're gonna set up a basic profile for each department. I'm gonna start with the standard user profile, and I'm gonna clone it. And to keep my custom profiles from getting mixed up with all the other profiles, I'm gonna use a standard naming convention on all of my custom profiles, so it's easier to find them. We're going to call it Universal Boxes Sales. 
and we're going to save that. And here's our profile. So you'll see here we've got a bunch of different settings here. We've got page layout options, field level security, which is another level that you can turn on. Um, we recommend not using it unless you have a very specific scenario. It's best to use page layout to control your field level security if you can. App settings, tab settings, record type settings. If you've got record types, you'll see an option like this where you'll have the edit option to control which record types that profile has access to. As you go down the list here, you'll see more and more settings coming up. Administrative permissions, here's a bunch of system permissions. Uh, you'll see things like editing HTML templates. There are report permissions in here for viewing and running reports, managing dashboards, and things that way. The help documentation is key for helping understand all of these permissions, what they do. If you run into a problem and you can't figure out a security issue in your system, go to the help documentation. It will likely tell you which permission needs to be turned on or off in order for that certain item to be able to happen. Okay. And then you'll get into the object permissions. You'll see here you've got read, create, edit, delete, view all, and modify all permissions for each object in the system. You've got all your standard objects, and then you've got custom objects below that. And then it gets into integrations, password policies. There is a uh, global password policy option for that for the whole system. And each profile will inherit that, but you can change the password policy per profile or on a permission set. As well as you can con control login hours, login IP ranges to lock people out if they're not in a certain network, and a bunch of different options here. So we're going to edit this profile just a little bit. This is for our sales team. We're going to leave most of that stuff on as the default. But as our basic profile, we do not want just anybody. Deleting anything. So I'm going to turn off all the delete permissions. Now, this is sales, and so I also want to make sure that I can read only on campaigns. Marketing will be managing the campaigns themselves, so the sales team doesn't need access to that, as well as cases. The sales team can read cases, but they cannot edit or, or create cases themselves. That has to go to the support team for that. So you just mark the boxes accordingly here. Now, accounts, we actually do want to give them access to delete their own accounts if they want. And there may be instances where, yeah, you're locking down your sales, but really any salesperson can have access to any account. So we're just going to give them full permissions on all accounts. Okay. Up here under tab settings, there's a couple of different options to control each tab. Default on means it will be in their tab bar across the top. Default off means they'll have access to it through the all tab section, but it won't be on their tab bar unless they add it. If you do tab hidden, they're not going to have access to that tab at all. They will not be able to see it. You see, there are some that are set that way, so you won't have access. So we're going to save that, and there is our sales profile. So now from here, our next profile is support, which is very similar. So again, I'm just going to clone this because I've already made some changes here. Give it a quick name. And again, I don't want my support team deleting anything. But they do have create and edit permissions for cases 
However, they can only read opportunity. So we're going to change that right over here. So you see, it's, it's easy to just quickly make some changes, save your profile, clone it, and there you've got your profile set up. <clears throat> now we've got our sales and support profile. And nobody can delete any records right now off the profile. What we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of permission sets for the sales management. And we're going to give them delete permissions. So permission sets are an extension of a profile. They have the same permissions as a profile. And they are assigned by a user license. So you can set up a permission set for different licenses in the system to assign those to different users. Setting the license will control which users can actually be added to that permission set. Keep that in mind. So we're going to save that. And for sales management, what we need to do is add the delete permission to opportunities. So we're going to come to object settings. We're going to go to opportunities and we're going to edit this and we're going to turn on the delete option and we're going to save that now you'll see that the permission set layout is a little bit different than the profile layout the same settings are here this is just a different layout you can turn on this layout for profiles as well let me show you where that is real quick. Under Customize and User Interface, there is an option here. This right here. Enhanced Profile List Views, Enhanced Profile User Interface. These are the newer interfaces that you saw in the permission set. If you turn this on, then your standard profile will look like that permission set did. So there's there's a few different interface options in here that kind of change the look and feel of your system. So now we've got our sales management permission set. We need to assign a user to it. So we're going to go to manage assignments. We're going to add an assignment you can add users to permission sets. So then what you want to do is you'll want to find your user, you'll select them, and you'll assign it. And now that user has now got that permission set. So what that means is that your sales manager will now have the sales profile with the added permission set to give extra permissions. Now this is Kind of a best practice you may ask why not create another profile for the sales manager you can do that uh, however to help keep the system a little cleaner and easier to manage and to control those individual permissions it is recommended you create as few profiles as possible and use permission sets for your additional permissions for your exceptions to the rules basically uh, you could use permission sets to also assign privileges to team lead that may not be quite as high as a sales manager, but in between a sales user and a sales manager. So things like that would be the use case for that. So once you've got profiles and permissions that you also need to set up your roles. So we're going to go under roles. We're going to hit set up roles. And you'll see by default it's just got our company name listed there. So we need to add a role. So back on my document here, we've got the whole structure laid out here. So we're not going to add the individual people immediately, but what we're going to do is add the role levels themselves. So we're going to add a role. We're going to give it a label. This will be the CEO. This role reports to, which will create our role hierarchy. And role name as displayed on the report. You can leave that blank and it'll just show the standard role name, or you can fill it in if you want. And then you'll see there's also opportunity access level on roles. Users in this role can view all opportunities associated with accounts they own, regardless of who owns the opportunities. 
for users can edit all opportunities associated with account sale. So basically what these options mean is that if you own an account, you will be able to see all of the opportunities in that account, whether you own it or not. The difference will be whether you can view those opportunities or edit those opportunities. We're gonna choose view in this case. And I'm just gonna hit save and new, and we'll say okay. Now I'm gonna create the next level, which is my sales general manager. And this role reports to, I just created it. So I can just do the little lookup field and select my CEO role there. And again, we're just gonna save you. And you'll just keep on going down, hit the little plus signs to open these up as you go. And you could keep continuing down just like that to build out your role hierarchy. When you come back to your role hierarchy, you will see your roles as they lay out. Now I could come right here and I can say, okay, I need to add a support manager under the CEO. So I'm gonna go right here under CEO, hit add role. And you'll see it automatically set the role reports to CEO. And then you can just save that. and then we can go back to our roles. So you'll see how that's gonna to start to lay out. Now let's go under our security controls and look at our sharing settings. So we know that sales is supposed to be Sales are supposed to only view their own opportunities. Right now, opportunities is set to public read only, which means that anybody can read and see any opportunity. That's not what we want. So we're gonna edit this. We're gonna change opportunities to private. Now you'll see in here some different settings. Private, public read only, and public read write. Just like it sounds, private means the owners will be the only ones that can see it. Public read only means everybody can see it, but you can only edit your own. Public read write means you can see and edit any records in the system. Some cases you may see this controlled by parent. For instance, contact have a controlled by parent option. The parent of a contact would be an account. So this means that the contacts will inherit whatever settings you set on the account. You can break that by specifically setting contacts to a different option if you wish. Once you have those set the way you want, then we'll save it. And you'll see this notice right here at the top. The worldwide default update has been initiated. What the system is gonna do now, is it's gonna go through and change the security settings on each record in the system. Depending on how much data you have in your system will depend on how long this takes. Keep this in mind. Every change you make, every time you hit save, it will run through this process. So if you have a lot of data and it takes a while to do this, you'll wanna make sure you give yourself enough time to complete this task because it can take a little while to get everything together. What you'll do is just let it go for a little bit, hit refresh, and as soon as it's done, it'll go away and go back to edit. Now, a couple more options that I didn't show here is manual user record sharing. 
this being on, and it's on by default, but this allows your users to share records with other people. So if you've got a sales rep that wants to share a record with somebody else and get help on the deal, there'll be a sharing button that they can just hit share, select who they want to share it with, and send it over, and then they'll be able to, that other user will then have access to see that record. Now you may have instances where we've set opportunities to private, but the support team is supposed to be able to see all opportunities, but not edit them, right? So we're gonna come down here to opportunity sharing rules. We're gonna hit new. We're gonna say support, read ops. We recommend always write a description in here just to help anybody else that comes in here. If you have a new admin come in, they want to be able to see what you're doing. So putting descriptions and helps to explain things. You can do sharing rules based on a record owner through groups, roles, or roles and subordinates, or you can do it based on criteria, which basically is any field in the system. Now you can set criteria. You could say, any opportunity with a stage of ID share with maybe we'll say roles and sports and sport manager and access a read only. So now any opportunity that hits this stage will be opened up to the support manager and anybody underneath him. In this case, I'm gonna do a record owner. I'm gonna say, roles and subordinates of the CEO, share with roles and subordinates of the support manager as read only. So this will make it so that any opportunity created in the system by anybody will be shared with the support team. And we'll save that. And like I mentioned before, you'll see, it will generally show a tag here and show you that it's in the process of creating and setting up those rules. There's no data in here right now, so it went really quick. So that's kind of going through how you set up sharing settings. Over here under the security controls, you'll see the password policies option. Like I mentioned, this is the global password policy for this system. This is the default that's inherited to everybody. And you can set this up how you'd like it, and then you can change it per profile or permission set as needed. To see there's lots of options here with uh, expiration days, how many passwords are remembered, password length, complexity requirements, no restriction, or you can mix uh, primary characters, special characters, lowercase, uppercase, however you'd like to set it. There's also a session settings option here. So you can set your timeout, how long your timeout is, uh, a page just sitting idle. You can disable the warnings, force logout, lock settings, and things that way. They're all listed here. You'll also see that you can do things like you can enable the SMS method of identity confirmation. Uh, which is the uh, SMS, the texting of verification codes to your cell phones. You can require security tokens for all API callouts. Uh, there is an option here under network access where you can add IP addresses. And if the IP address that you're logging in from is in the system, it will not ask you for a verification code. If you turn on this option here, then that network access is ignored for API log. They will have to have security token in order for that API call to work. So see there's 
a lot of different options throughout the system here. Okay. So some best practices that we're going to mention again, uh, fewer pro profiles and more permission sets helps keep the system a little cleaner and easier to manage and see what exceptions you've got throughout the system. Uh, that does include your management team. Put your management team on a restricted profile and then give them more permissions through permission sets. It's always easier to add permissions than to take them away. And a good practice is to buy an extra license for your company, have one system admin account in your production environment. Everybody, including your IT team, works under a standard profile. When changes need made, they log in as the admin, make the change, and then log back in as their standard user. This helps to prevent uh, unwanted changes and exceptions to a good uh, a good practice of a nice policy and process around rolling out changes to your org. A sandbox would be different. You can set up multiple admins in a sandbox and work with a sandbox to help set, set up changes and do things in your org. And then you can set yourself up with a nice release cycle to push those changes over to production with that one system admin account. Okay, uh, there's your, your overview of security within Salesforce and setting up some security with the best practice information and different items there. Any questions that anybody has that they want to ask around security or any other topics, uh, send those over to us. We'll take a look at those. A uh, question coming in being asked about loading up users. Um, if you've got a lot of users to add to the system, you can go in and just manually create your users one at a time. But if you've got a lot of users, that can be time consuming. You can use the add multiple users. Um, you'll see as you do this, It gives you very basic information for each user to set up first name, last name, email, profile, and role. So you can't set any of the other settings using this. This is a good way to add a whole bunch of users real quick, but it's kind of limited on how many or how much information per user you can put in here. You can use the data loader, either the Apex data loader or other data loading tools, and a spreadsheet to load your users. There's more requirements around doing that, um, we'll get up in the help documentation and it will help to explain what fields are required in order to do that. It's a practice that we use often. We uh, have our own internal templates that we've built uh, specifically for that practice. So as we're working with different companies, loading users, we'll just load up our spreadsheet and then use the data loader to populate all of those users. We will often load up our users as inactive users and get all the users listed in the system. And then we'll go back and turn them on when the time is ready to have them activated. All right. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. And next week, we will be talking about chatter. Uh, how do you, what is chatter? How is it used? What's it good for? And why to use it? Uh, we do use it a lot ourselves, and it is a very good tool. Another question just came in, is this webinar recorded? Yes, it is recorded. Uh, there will be a, a YouTube channel um, for iBailey, and all of our sessions are going to be posted to that YouTube channel. I will make sure that we will send out a follow-up email with links to that recording so that you can take a look at those. We've got a lot of previous sessions up there already. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, as we build on to the, those will be posted every week as well. 
Again, thank you very much for joining us. I hope you'll join us again next week and in future weeks as we continue to go. Uh, feel free to send over any questions you've got. You can email us questions uh, to support at iBaby.com. And have a wonderful weekend, everybody. <laughs>